we got a pretty decent selection here, and that's thanks to the guys at Tucson Guns. Tucson Guns is a full-service gun shop, Class 3 dealer, here in Tucson, Arizona. Uh, they've been in business for seven years now. Ever since the beginning, they've been supporters of our websites and now our videos. What they've done is given us the opportunity with 10 different 380 pistols, uh, compare, review, evaluate them, and yes, even get a little range time. So we do appreciate the, the opportunity. Hopefully we'll do it justice here. I feel I should do one on accessories and options, and I don't think I'm going to be able to do that one justice. I will uh, go with my favorite little inside the pocket holster, which I use for my kel like this one. So um, obviously this, Kel this, uh, this gets used with my pistols, so that fits in no problem. Um, something that's based on it, you know, the Ruger LCP. Again, no problems at all. Covers the trigger, keeps lint and dust, keeps it oriented in the pocket, gives you the ability to get a nice uh, shooting grip on the pistol as you're drawing it. Allows you to pull it from your pocket, either your side pocket, your cargo pocket, or even your back pocket. For me, I can keep it in the back pocket of my jeans. As I'm drawing it, if the holster doesn't release automatically because of the sort of tacky texture of the material on the outside um, or the shape, then this uh, shape to it here should be able to catch on the side of your pocket as you angle yourself as you draw out of there. Um, once it's used for a little while, you see that it's sort of, I mean, it's still a pliable material, but it sort of molds to the shape of the pistol you're using. So what that means is when you go to reholster, although it's not all the time, uh, depending on how tight your pants are and how tight your pocket constricts the holster, a lot of times you are able to reholster as well. So DeSantis Nemesis is a nice little holster, and although it's not a fair fight for some of those larger ones, um, we've now tried it with the kel and the Ruger. Let's try this Diamondback. Again, like if it was made for it, covers the trigger, does a good job, doesn't interfere with the trigger with the mag release, so you shouldn't have any troubles there. Definitely obscures its its lines overall. A little bit different trigger guard on this Ruger TCP or this Taurus TCP. So let's see, no problems at all. The cut of this DeSantis uh, Nemesis uh, is really uh, a decent shape because it's covering this trigger guard even more. So it looks like again keeping that magazine release untethered. Uh, and uh, breaking up the outline of that pistol. So far, a good job. Next up is the uh, car, P380. And again, fits in here perfectly. Again, these are all very similar sizes, of course, but because they have different shapes and whatnot, I wasn't sure if they'd all fit. Now we'll get into a little bit less obvious uh, options here. So we've got the North American Arms again. Definitely a different shape than these. Um, but again, I guess similar proportions because it does work just fine. A um, little bit heavier, so it's a little bit more top heavy. But again, depending on your pocket, it's probably not going to have room because of the shape and everything. It's just not going to have room to fall this way. However, if it does, worse things could happen. Although it hasn't, you know, retained your shooting position, it definitely still covers your trigger and does the job of keeping list and lint and junk out of there. And then we'll check out this Micro Desert Eagle. And again, much different shape and everything. Sure, it doesn't use the whole barrel because it doesn't need it, but it definitely covers the trigger guard enough that you're not going to get a discharge or anything. And again, keeps it oriented in your pocket. Fits in there just pretty decent. This one's, of course, shaped for a kel but um, I suspect if you bought one and had it shaped straight, straight for your Desert Eagle, you'd be fine. Um, again, these aren't really fair. They're a little bit too big for it but that actually works pretty decent. It sticks out a little bit more than you want. This really isn't a, a, a pocket gun, but in a pinch, if you're putting this in a cargo pocket or even a pocket of a pouch or a bag or whatever, then you know this might just do the trick to keep it oriented and uh, cover that trigger. Not perfectly, but it covers the trigger a bit. Uh, I don't think this one will fit. No, it really doesn't do much, Just, but that's again not a fair fight. With this Bursa, again, not a fair fight. It does fit in there, but I'd never recommend a holster where the trigger is exposed like that. Just too much risk of, you know, bad things happening. So it doesn't work on the largest ones. I wish I had an Uncle Mike's or some of the other brands, but I suspect that they're probably going to work pretty decent in all of them because, to be honest, they're all pretty much the same concept here. They're a, you know, a holster-type pocket sewn with a little bit of a square shape so that they do the job that they're supposed to. And a couple of more holster options for a small concealable pistol like these um, would be an ankle holster uh, or belly band. And then I just happen to have a Phobos uh, for the kel -Tex. So you can see that the the Phobos, if you haven't used these before, this is a paddle type holster. Very uh, utilitarian in my opinion. Uh, basically uses this strong polymer that's uh, molded to the shape of the pistol. It used, you can see how the trigger guard is actually the part that is pinched uh, for retainment. So uh, you, 
can see here as the pistol goes in even though it's touching in all these areas it's getting a little bit of holster wear but really it's just here that it's actually being retained and it's locked into place by that uh, sort of pressure of the screw squishing that rubber grommet so you can adjust that tension but it's held together by the tension there of the polymer material and then however tight you make that screw and it's difficult to illustrate it's much easier to, see, to understand this concept when you're wearing one but uh, you can see that how the paddle holster works um, if this were uh, let's say that this were the material of my pants or whatever I'm wearing this would come in to the inside you know, this side is my body it would come in and then hold it there and then if I had a belt on that belt would come through and sort of you know lock and this hook here would lock the belt or the belt area um, this could also be worn just through uh, if this were my pants it could come under the belt and the paddle could stay outside my pants and just use the belt as the retainment uh, that's perfectly acceptable. A lot of people do that, and that's why there's a little bit of texture here, I think, so that you can, uh, you know, it looks kind of nice, and also, I guess, when it's in there, it helps keep it from slipping. But So the paddle, then, once it's hooked to the belt, if you want to remove it, one of the features I like about a paddle holster is if this was, you know, if we were looking down, this was in on my belt line, I could reach down, release it, you know, from inside my pants there, and then pull towards my body, pull up with the whole unit because once I've released it it's not going to catch on the belt or anything pull this whole unit up and now I've got the pistol removed from my belt um, although it was a sturdy uh, anchored well to my belt now it's released and the trigger's always been uh, covered uh, no danger of a, you know accidental discharge or anything so really safe and really practical holster now this is a kind of a small holster to wear on your belt line but for some applications this might be perfect for people I think though that because these only cost like thirty dollars or something twenty five to thirty dollars um, I think it's worth the investment if you're able to get one for your pistol uh, I like to use them while I'm at the range let's say I've got this in my pocket and for some reason I can't take it into the building I'm going into I might want to insert it into a holster like this to keep the trigger and then maybe into a safe or into a glove box that's locked or something like that so these are made they really only work with the one firearm that they're molded for and none of these are easily going in much too wide probably no chance at all and I only did it just to uh, prove in case someone said they heard that one might work so that's a Phobos again kind of a one-trick pony because again it's designed to work with one firearm okay next up we're gonna compare sizes again and uh, this one is a KNJ their ankle holster with garter garter is just the uh, actually I should show you too that it says it's made for two inch frame revolvers 32 and 380 autos so 380 autos it should work with everything we got here uh, garter is just this little extra deal that I never use people have different opinions but basically this is made out of I think what the material like a wetsuit would be made out of the outside material is all sort of a really stretchy foamy velcro stuff and then that lets the strong side of velcro basically attach anywhere and it's really wide for uh, both uh, comfort and then also from sure because it makes a nice strong attachment so in any way obviously it's an ankle holster I tend to wear mine with the uh, firearm on the inside so like you know between my legs so this would be my right leg uh, it comes around and attaches easily I've never heard of anyone that this doesn't fit I mean obviously it can fit an elephant leg so just a matter of uh, if it's comfortable for you I guess anyway the garter is just this thing that comes up and attaches over your calf I've never worn a pistol that was heavy enough to need this so I almost always just take mine off but this isn't a pistol or a holster review it's also got a retention strap which again is just velcro and then the holster itself is just the shape uh, sewn into the material and it's basically a shape that I suspect is probably going to work fine with all of these so we're going to try it with the Ruger and the kel first off which I know it works with because I've used them before definitely covers everything the retention strap works fine um, again these are basically the same shape gun so it's going to be the same uh, because the holster is so big though it's kind of a one size fits all it actually is a little tough getting the uh, uh, actual shooting grip on this you always try to grab your pistol with a shooting grip most of the time uh, it's just tough to do with this particular one so it takes a little finesse only because that pocket is kind of big for it 
Diamondback DB380, no problem at all. Again, same thing, it really covers that trigger guard. The uh, Taurus TCP, no problems. Uh, basically, again, these aren't that different in size physically. Uh, the, car, uh, the car, again, no problems. Definitely fills it up just a bit more, but no problems. Uh, the American, North American Arms, a little bit, uh, almost a little bit too small because it's such a small form factor. It's fitting in there at a little bit different angle. Actually, I suspect with the weight of this, you might actually want to use the garter. And again, it, your mileage may vary on stuff like that. Another little dense, little heavier, smaller. Uh, again, with even with the weird trigger or the different size, shape trigger, no problems. Retention, no problem. So uh, actually, this one seems like it might be pretty easy to draw. Don't think I'd want to carry anything near as heavy. Uh, carrying a Keltec disappears. I carry a Glock 27 on this with this actually, which will fit in it. It's huge. It's not something I run around in, but that's the reason I don't run. Um, anyway, the Glock does fit in it, so this is definitely a one-size-fits-all kind of holster. But when you wear a Keltec or like this Ruger, uh, I, you could forget it's on. You. So um, next, I guess. Next, I guess we'll throw in uh, Walther just to show it. And again, it definitely fits in there. Well, here's the things that I'd be worried about with it, though. Um, you've got a lot of the, and we didn't even look, but most of the time these little guns didn't even really rise past the material. Now, of course, much bigger form factor pistols here. You've got the beaver tail out here. Uh, you've got the endier uh, stuff. So you're going to be talking about printing, and you're going to be talking about chafing this stuff, touching you and rubbing you all day. Uh, don't think I'd want to carry something like this in a at least in this ankle holster. There's a different ankle holsters out there. And of course your mileage may vary if you're up in the uh, cold states and you've got different types of uh, clothing on, then maybe this isn't a big deal. This one is just a little too wide. Sorry, this is the Walther PK380. In this particular holster, since it's set up for revolvers also, it narrows down just too much. And because of that, it won't fit in all the way. And because of that, the trigger's exposed too much and it's just way too top heavy on it. So definitely a, a fail on this one. but. Again, not fair because it's such a large pistol. Next up, or last up, would be the Bursa. And this one's wide, but again, we're dealing with the same kind of situation we had with the Walther. A lot of it is riding up over the top of the holster. It's definitely heavy. You've got sharp, uh, annoying, um, you know, textures and shapes and edges and things. Wouldn't want this anywhere near my ankle. And because it's so wide, that's definitely going to make a, your leg look funny and you make you walk funny. Again, definitely a holster for smaller ones, but we can see that just about all of them fit into this size holster. I guess last up is just a belly band because, again, with a very lightweight pistol, a belly band might be an option for you, especially for the females. And uh, we can see that it's probably custom made for something like the LCP or the uh, Caltech because probably, at least as old as my belly band is here, uh, it, this would have been the only thing out there at the time. Maybe some of the row bars and stuff, but anyway, now let's try this Taurus TCP. No problems. Might Some of these might end up being a little top heavy because sometimes they expect it to kind of fit in this whole pocket. These are definitely a little too big for all that. But um, just depending on the clothing and how you, what you do, you know, what kind of activities you do. Wow, that Diamondback fits in there pretty decent. Because of the shape of the Diamondback, I might be concerned about some of this. Something like the Ruger, which is very smooth. Uh, even though only a bit of it fits up over the top of the belly band and almost always people have a shirt on or something. Uh, this is a very smooth part of the firearm that's sticking out where, like I say, on this diamond back, not that it's real rough, but there are some edges and some, you know, things that might make it a little less comfortable. Uh, your uh, car, P380, again, nice and smooth. There's a little more texture on the back strap here, so that might be an issue, but hardly an issue. Definitely fits in there nice. Because of the top heaviness of this one, it's so lightweight on the grip. This one really feels secure in here so far out of all of them. This one really feels like it's at home there. Um, next up, we'll do the uh, Desert Eagle. This one might be an issue because of the shape of the trigger guard. And, you know, I think you could probably do it, but it definitely feels top-heavy. By the time you put ammo in here, because it's really not sitting in there well, you might be out of luck. However, uh, most belly bands have something like this for a wallet or whatever, and you might be able to get by with something like that. Not the best draw in the world, but anything in a pinch. Again, for the females, I know that sometimes it's pretty difficult finding options for you when you're wearing uh, fancy clothes or whatever. So um, next up would be the North American Arms, and I suspect this one's going to do pretty well. Only real problem here is the uh, sort of you know extra grip you have there, which is stopping it from fitting in there just perfectly. Uh, but more importantly, the weight. Even though there's not a lot sticking out the top of the holster, and it's fairly smooth actually, 
this thing is heavy. I can really feel the weight on this one. Um, I'll just stick these in here for uh, illustrational purposes, but I think you're really stretching the uh, the weight limits of a, of a belly band by uh, putting in something as heavy as one of these. It definitely hits this, you know, fits in there just right though, and I suspect it would probably stay put. This one, we might have some trouble with that big muzzle. And again, remember we've got a light rail on here. So the, because this stretches, it is fitting, but this would definitely wear out your belly band quick. Uh, as much as it's stretching on the outside, it's gonna be stretching on the inside, so that's not gonna feel real good. Um, and because it's so heavy, you're gonna have to have this thing pretty tight, so I don't think you'd ever be able to put this back in. You'd probably need two hands just to insert it the first time. Um, again, the problems we're having with it relate to its rail, because again, that adds a lot of width and stuff up here. Um, it gives you the option of a light, though, so it's hard to say that it's a negative. And then last, we'll just shove this uh, Versa in there. Again, a double stack and a big gun, so definitely not designed for something like this. And because there's so much weight with the double stack and the weight of the ammo out here, not something I think I'd recommend, you know, last resort for sure. But again, really not made for that. So, again, we've done a couple more holster options with these uh, 10 pistols. And again, we're probably looking at a wide range here, but hopefully it's helping you make a decision if you're in the process of doing that. Uh, as far as other options for these, um, there's definitely laser options for the uh, Keltec and for the Ruger. Uh, those are the, I don't have an example of it, but that's the um, trigger guard lasers that would mount here and then give you a little pressure pad so that your shooting grip uh, gives you the chance to light the laser up without touching the trigger guard or the trigger. Um, there's nothing available that I'm aware of for really any of the others. However, there's probably something available for the Walther, assuming this is a standard size rail, then that means any light would work on this one, and it's definitely a large enough frame pistol to take any light. There may be, honestly, some laser options available for some of the others. I'm just not uh, familiar with them. I'm assuming they'll probably come out with something for the car because they have uh, laser uh, options for the uh, other versions of the car. I think I may have seen a laser option for the TCP, but again, I'm not sure. So I'm not sure about some of the others. I think you may be out of the luck. Luckily though, because they're so light, it's very easy to have a flashlight in your other hand. And uh, the two hand techniques for shooting um, are definitely still applicable with the 380. So um, holster options, I think you've got quite a few. Laser options, you've got a few with some of them. And light options is pretty much carry a flashlight. The guys and gals of GunWebsites.com encourage you to take a CCW class every year, practice at least once a month, and carry every day. Thanks for watching GunWebsites.com.